Hello, I'm Ken Matthew, Vice President with Charles River Associates, and I'm joined by Leslie M. Smith, partner with Kirkland & Ellis. We're truly pleased to be with you as co-chairs of the 2021 Legal Aid Society's Equal Access to Justice Awards Luncheon. Your support is so appreciated as it benefits a wealth of legal services the Legal Aid Society provides, spanning safety and family, individual rights and social justice, and health, housing, and economic stability. These services reached 20,403 clients this past year, more than 6,600 than last year, an amazing 152% increase. We all know that the legal system with its procedures and protocols can seem overwhelming to those who are unfamiliar. In fact, my career path resulted in daily contact with the legal system, and over 25 years later, I can tell you with utmost confidence, I am often perplexed and depend on others to navigate the intricacies. As such, we can appreciate the fear of the unknown legal system faced by many of the clients LAS represents, as they are often in extremely challenging and sometimes life-threatening situations. Your support enabled more than 20,000 people to receive essential services that in many cases change the trajectory of their lives. I am personally inspired by an essay I read years ago that influenced and informed my view on helping others with the only two assets I have any hope of controlling, time and money. I'll paraphrase a bit for you. There was a child walking along the beach after thousands of starfish had washed up from a storm. An elderly person observed the child throwing the starfish back in the water, one at a time. And, and he asked uh, the child, um, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm, I'm helping the starfish. And he said, well, don't you know that it won't matter because there's so many, there's thousands, you, you can't possibly help them all? And the child responded and said, well, it matters to the one I threw back. It, it is a paraphrasing of The Star Thrower, written by Lauren Isley, published in 1969. And what that meant to me when I read it and still means today, is even though there are thousands and thousands of starfish on the beach, it matters to the one starfish you help. As we're all too familiar with, time and money are very fleeting. As such, I learned the best answer to the question of when to do something productive and useful is now, because that's the moment I have the most control over and perhaps the only control over. As we continued this past year to make our way through the after effects and new developments related to the pandemic, your generosity continued. We're grateful that you committed to supporting equal access to justice has not wavered, and you chose now to support LAS. In fact, together we've already raised $450,000 for this year's Equal Access to Justice Awards program. That's the most ever raised through this event. Thank you very much. Speaking of thanks, we want to take a moment to recognize the many sponsors who make equal access to justice possible. Presenting sponsors include Charles River Associates, McDermott Will and Emery, Wilkie Farr, k &L Gates, and Kirkland and Ellis. The champion sponsors are FTI Consulting, Jenner and Block, Latham and Watkins, Morgan Lewis and Bacchius, Polzinelli, Quinn Emanuel, White and Case, Winston and Strawn. And our advocate sponsors are Ackerman, Baker McKenzie, Barkley Damon, Cynthia Patton, Dwayne Morris, Catton Muchen, Massey and Gale, Mayor Brown, Sidley and Austin. Thank you also to our supporter and friend level sponsors who we've included in today's program and on the screen. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you. The Legal Aid Luncheon Program wouldn't be possible without the work and dedication of many LAS friends and volunteers. They include the members of our lunch and host committee, the members of the board of the Legal Aid Society, the board of directors of Metropolitan Family Services, and the associate board of the Legal Aid Society, as well as the lawyers, staff, volunteers, and leadership of the Legal Aid Society and Metropolitan Family Services. Their work is changing lives and future possibilities for thousands of families and individuals throughout Metropolitan Chicago, one person at a time. We are now pleased to introduce Miguel Caperlein, Executive Director of the Legal Aid Society of Metropolitan Family Services. Good afternoon and welcome. We're so grateful that you've joined us today as we reflect on the amazing work of the Legal Aid Society over this past year. 
and to honor and celebrate this year's William H. Avery Award recipient, Sean Martin and Baxter International. I feel safe in saying that these past two years of chaos and uncertainty during the pandemic has spared none of us heartache, grief, or loss. We have all had to make sacrifices and deal with realities most of us could not have envisioned just a short time ago. The pandemic has exposed many inequities in our society, and we must commit ourselves to ensuring the legal community remains vigilant and ever committed to making sure the promise of justice for all is central to all we do. Throughout LAS's 135 year history, we have played a vital role in helping Chicagoans through some of the most trying and difficult times. And today is no different, whether it is the pandemic, racial injustice, unemployment, economic instability, the looming housing crisis, or spiking cases of domestic violence and human trafficking, all of the tremendous challenges before us disproportionately affect our clients. Our incredible staff of dedicated advocates have gone above and beyond over this past year and pushed us as an organization to not only continue to offer our full array of services, but to create new and expanded initiatives in community lawyering. A little over one year ago, we launched our Communities Partnering for Peace Justice Corps as part of Metropolitan Family Services Peace Initiatives Program. This program works in communities most affected by gun violence. Our Justice Corps now has staff embedded at 14 different community partners in 26 different neighborhoods across Chicago. Here, our staff works on addressing the full spectrum of civil legal issues, including things such as record expungement, gaining access to needed public benefits, creating opportunities for gainful employment, and other social determinants of health, such as stable housing. Working closely with community partners to address neighborhood self-identified legal needs helps build trust and provides one building block towards peace and prosperity. So many Chicagoans in these neighborhoods and communities have lost hope and feel that they've been left behind with no path forward. We are going to be part of changing that. Community lawyering is needed now more than ever. In that spirit, we have created more opportunities for staff to join MFS's centers across Chicago and DuPage. This not only helps us bring our services more directly to communities in need, but it allows us to fully leverage all of the social and behavioral health services MFS offers to make sure clients and families truly have opportunities to fulfill their dreams for a better future. We have embedded staff at MFS's new Marionette Park Center in order to bring services back to communities that have long suffered from a lack of investment. We are one of the very few legal aid organizations now providing services at the Markham Courthouse. We have opened up a new help desk at the Rolling Meadows Courthouse to provide assistance on family law matters, and our new impact litigation and advocacy initiative is focused on bringing about change by tackling systemic issues of inequality and pushing to pass effective and responsive legislation. Victims' rights, especially in the context of domestic violence, elder justice, and human trafficking, are also three other areas where we have been able to enhance and expand our program services. Recently, MFS merged with Family Shelter Services in DuPage, and part of the merger included acquiring a domestic violence shelter. One of the most immediate and pressing needs victims of domestic violence face is safe and immediate housing. The staff at the shelter already provides supportive social service programs, and we are so pleased that this year, our new DuPage domestic violence team is now embedded at the shelter to offer immediate legal assistance. Many of us know just how cumbersome and confusing the legal system can be, but we are now able to provide representation, information, support, and most of all, hope to survivors in a safe setting. It's a tremendous accomplishment and our staff led the efforts to create the program. This new funding sets a course that allows us to meet community needs in a very effective way. Our Elder Justice Project has seen a need for its services spike this past year with many elderly clients having experienced mental, physical, and economic abuse due to lockdowns and other restrictions during the pandemic. Our staff has worked tirelessly to help address these issues and collaborate with law enforcement, medical providers, banks, 
and others to create teams that together address the multitude of issues facing elder clients. Our staff's approach to tackling these issues is highly unique and very effective. This is why just two weeks ago, we were awarded a major grant by the Department of Justice to continue expanding these services. And today, I'm very happy to share with you that this past week, LAS was awarded a $2 million grant to expand our already robust anti-human trafficking work across the state of Illinois. As it stands now, we are one of only a handful of national organizations that provide services to both victims of sex and labor trafficking. And we are the only organization that can provide the wealth of social and behavioral health services in-house to survivors. This is very important because so many victims of human trafficking have multiple legal and social service needs, including needing safe housing, access to public benefits, oftentimes immigration relief, and specialized trauma support social services. It is a bit of a secret to the public that there are hundreds of labor camps across Illinois where workers are brought in on foreign guest worker visas and housed in remote locations with little access to any services. They work in industries such as meat packing, corn detasseling, massage and nail parlors, hotels and restaurants, and landscaping, just to name a few. Some bad actors exploit this reality and many workers end up as victims of labor or sex trafficking. Our outreach staff investigates where these camps are located and they travel to meet with workers, educating them about their legal rights. We oftentimes need to work with an array of partners, including law enforcement, healthcare providers, local social service agencies, and housing providers to create safety plans that can be implemented to help victims out of the trafficking situation. The challenge of combating human trafficking is oftentimes dangerous, but our staff does not shy away from leading in this area. This new funding will actually see us open up a fully staffed downstate office, and we will continue to be a national leader in helping end human trafficking. I know I speak on behalf of everyone at LAS when I say your engagement with and support of our organization inspires us to work even harder on behalf of our communities. Whether it be through pro bono support, donations, new ideas for projects, or attending today's luncheon, we are so grateful to you. I'd like to give special thanks to our very dedicated staff who continue to step up to the challenges presented each day. They are unwavering in their commitment to our clients and our mission, and they make LAS an incredibly special place to work and call home. I would also like to thank our LAS board for their leadership, collaboration, and constant push to keep us faithful to our mission. I also extend my deep gratitude to our host committee and co-chairs Leslie Smith and Ken Matthew for their tireless efforts in helping put this luncheon together. And to Metropolitan's President and CEO Rick Estrada for his tremendous leadership. And I also extend our heartfelt gratitude to our honorees Sean Martin and Baxter International who embody everything we believe in and value at the Legal Aid Society. I hope the stories and reflections you hear today will inspire you and that you will take great pride in knowing that the support you lend LAS truly makes a difference in the lives of so many vulnerable people and communities. Thank you. Next, the Legal Aid Society recognizes excellence in pro bono legal service. On behalf of the Legal Aid Society, I'm pleased to present the 2021 Scott C. Salberg Pro Bono Awards, recognizing outstanding pro bono service by an individual and by a law firm or corporation. Our 2021 individual honoree is Maureen McGinnis, who was a dedicated volunteer with the Legal Aid Society's Elder Help Desk throughout 2020 and 2021, even as we shifted to a remote format. Maureen volunteered more than 100 hours of her time and assisted several dozen clients with legal issues. She often spent extra time on cases, making sure clients were fully informed of their options, and her case summary forms were always very detailed a big help to the LAS staff who do the rec record keeping for the help desk. I'm very honored to receive the Scott C. Solberg Pro Bono Individual Award. I started volunteering at the Legal Aid Society some years ago in the Anti-Human Trafficking Division, and then later moved to volunteering for their Elder Help Desk. The wonderful thing about volunteering for the Legal Aid Society is that you can come and go as a volunteer, 
And you can also volunteer as little or as much as you want. I don't know if people realize how many legal problems were created because of COVID, particularly for the already marginalized and impoverished elderly population. I really enjoyed volunteering for the Elder Help Desk because I spoke to so many wonderful elders and got an inside look into their lives. It was so rewarding when I was able to help many of them by setting them in the right direction or by educating them on the law and how our legal system works. I don't know if our legal community realizes how difficult it, difficult it is for the poor, especially the elderly poor, to navigate our legal system and achieve justice. That is why it is so important for attorneys to volunteer in the legal world as our expertise can help so many in need. Finally, I would like to let you all know how incredible all the attorneys and staff are at the Legal Aid Society. They are the most incredible group of people working day in and day out to help those most in need. These attorneys and staff are empowered with the best attorneys, paralegals, advocates, and legal assistants in the Chicago area, but have chosen to help those in need. I feel privileged to help gotten to know them. I encourage all attorneys to volunteer for the Legal Aid Society. It is an eye-opening experience, which will bring you countless rewards. Thank you so much for this award. Next, we have our pro bono award recognizing an outstanding law firm or corporation. The Legal Aid Society recognizes Winston and Strawn for their ongoing commitment to LAS's pro bono programs, in particular, the Simple Divorce Program. The Simple Divorce Program is unique in that it is designed for clients who do not qualify for direct services from many legal aid providers, but for whom hiring a private attorney is not financially possible. Winston Strawn has been involved with the Simple Divorce Program for many years, and from late 2019 to early 2021, they successfully obtained divorces in all of the cases LAS placed with them, accounting for over 250 volunteer hours. The firm has also committed to taking additional cases this fall, so we expect to be able to assist another five to 10 clients. Additionally, LAS would like to specially recognize Winston and Strawn attorneys, Julie Bauer and Joey Becker for nearly two years of tireless work on behalf of a client and her Keep Chicago Renting Ordinance counterclaim case. Julie and Joey co-counseled with an LAS attorney, wrote briefs, conducted research, and helped determine litigation strategy. We greatly appreciate their generosity and collegiality and look forward to many more success stories coming from our pro bono partnership with Winston and Strawn. I am pleased to introduce Julie Bauer of Council Pro Bono Litigation, who will accept the award on Winston and Strawn's behalf. Thank you, Elizabeth. On behalf of Winston and Strawn, I'm pleased to accept the Scott Solberg Pro Bono Award. Winston and Strawn began partnering with the Legal Aid Society on a simple divorce program about three years ago. These simple divorces have given our newest litigators the opportunity to handle a state court proceeding on their own with support and advice from LAS staff when needed from the beginning to end in a period of a few months. They met with clients, drafted petitions, dealt with our docket department to arrange for filing and service, and prepared for the prove-ups and final judgments. These cases often presented our associates with their first opportunity to get on their feet in court, speak to a judge, and advise a client. During the pandemic, our advice has expanded to include advising clients how to get on a Zoom court proceeding as several of our clients were unfamiliar with Zoom. At the same time, our clients who were unfamiliar with the court system and unable to hire an attorney received the legal representation they needed and the knowledge that they would have an advocate with them when they appeared in court. Over the past three years, we've represented more than a dozen individuals. We look forward to continuing this project this fall with a new class of litigators and new clients. Thank you for the opportunity to serve your clients and for this recognition of our work. Thank you, Julie. With your support, the Legal Aid Society continues to break ground in bringing legal services where our communities need them most. One new initiative you'll learn about is the CP4P Justice Corps, which provides free, neighborhood-based legal services for participants of Communities Partnering for Peace, also known as CP4P. 
CP4P is a partnership of leading outreach organizations, convened by Metropolitan Family Services, that is working to impact Chicago communities most affected by gun violence. Through individualized legal services, the CP4P Justice Corps offers justice-involved adults the opportunity to move past the legal issues and barriers holding them back from success. Specialty areas include employment issues, wage theft, housing, public benefits, crime victim services, human trafficking, elder law, and domestic violence. Please welcome Sunny Thatch, Managing Attorney, CP4P Justice Corps, Legal Aid Society of Metropolitan Family Services, who will share more about the CP4P Justice Corps program. One year ago in September 2020, I was entrusted to launch the Communities Partnering for Peace Justice Corps. I set out to craft a practice group which was responsive to the clients and communities in which we serve by providing quality and trauma-informed legal services in support of the grassroots organizations working to make our communities safer. The goal that I announced last year for the Justice Corps was to educate and empower our communities as to how the law can be used to provide greater security and prosperity. To that end, what began as a team of one has since grown to include a team of nine attorneys and paralegals. Launching a community-based legal program during a once-in-a-century pandemic has had its host of challenges. I am proud to say that the team has risen to the occasion. Leveraging technology, we have built relationships with the 14 organizations which comprises CP4P to institute a robust referral process, conduct virtual Know Your Rights presentations, and host weekly Zoom office hours. The generalist model that we offer is distinctive in that we are able to provide support in various practice areas. Not only do we help individuals clear their criminal records, we have the ability to assist them with other legal issues they may have, from housing to family to immigration, public benefits, and so much more. As conditions improved, we were able to begin meeting clients in the communities. Currently, the Justice Corps works on site a minimum of one afternoon per week, alternating between our CP4P organizations. Whether it is UCAN Chicago in the Roseland and North Lawndale communities on the south and west sides, to one north side in the Rogers Park and Uptown communities on the north side, you will find a Justice Corps member there between the hours of 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. and any other time we're needed. These afternoon schedules consist of one hour of community education on a pertinent legal topic, followed by client appointments and office hours. Being on site and within the community increases accessibility to legal services and reduces a significant barrier that clients may have to address their legal concerns. The work that resonates the most with our clients is the expungement and sealing of their criminal backgrounds. Both of these processes lead to freedom for our clients. With expungement and sealing, we empower people to take control of their record and expand their lives. Our very first granted petition was for driving without a license. The client, in fact, had never been issued a license and had been prevented from doing so because of this 10-year-old mark on her record. Thanks to the Justice Corps, this mother is now working to lawfully gain her license and secure better employment to support her family. We are looking to expand community lawyering by adding additional staff in MFS community centers to provide case management and expanded practice areas to continue meeting the needs of our clients. The continued growth of the Justice Corps is dependent upon the generous support of donors such as yourself. Thank you. We'd like to thank Baxter International Foundation for its generous support of the CP4P Justice Corps. The foundation has made a grant in support of the program, and funding will be used to hire additional legal staff and facilitate the expansion of services to a greater geographic area in the coming year. The grant aligns with Baxter's priority of promoting overall community resilience and the advancement of racial justice. Legal Aid Society Executive Director Miguel Caberline will now present the Legal Aid Society's William H. Avery Award. The Legal Aid Society established our Avery Award in 1985 in memory of William H. Avery, 
former partner of Sidley Austin. The award recognizes and encourages outstanding leadership in providing legal aid to those unable to afford an attorney. The award honors these contributions to the legal community and to equal access to justice. We are honored to recognize Baxter International and Sean Martin, Senior Vice President and General Counsel with the William H. Avery Award for the corporation's outstanding philanthropic and pro bono law efforts and Sean's personal leadership in Chicago's business, legal, and philanthropic communities. Baxter's mission is to save and sustain lives by providing critical healthcare products in over 100 countries around the world. In a variety of capacities, including financial support, Baxter's many dedicated legal, ethics and compliance, and government affairs professionals have helped to support legal aid organizations across Chicagoland. Baxter has a long history of leadership in corporate responsibility and environmental stewardship. Through the annual reporting process, it measures and evaluates its performance, communicates its progress and challenges, and identifies opportunities to drive even greater impact. Baxter has received extensive recognition for its commitment to creating lasting value for the communities it serves. Some of the corporation's many recent honors include being named among the 100 best corporate citizens by 3BL Corporate Responsibility Magazine, as well as being named among the Just Capital's top 100 most just companies, and inclusion in Newsweek's America's Most Responsible Companies. In addition, Baxter's law department actively supports pro bono law through the Legal Aid Foundation and CARPLS. In fact, Baxter's Associate General Counsel, Sarah Paget, currently serves as the Vice President on the CARPLS Board of Directors. Baxter's Law Department also supports Legal Aid Chicago, Highland Park Legal Aid Clinic, CJE Senior Life's Weinberg Community for Senior Living, and the Center for Disability and Elder Law. On that note, I am very pleased to present the 2021 William H. Avery Award for outstanding contributions to the legal community and to equal access to justice to Baxter International and Sean Martin. Somewhere beyond traditional thinking, beyond standard treatments, is a place that bridges where we've been to where we're driven to be. It's where innovation that saves and sustains lives meets the providers who make it happen. Where our ability to manage illness expands to reach patients with limited options. Where we address complications before they become life-threatening. Where we're not only treating diseases, but also discovering smarter ways to prevent them. This is our place, where we come together to write our greatest chapter as a visionary company operating at the center of global healthcare. This is the intersection of our boldest possibilities. My name is Miranda Donahue. I am Deputy General Counsel of Global Businesses and Global R&D at Baxter and Deerfield. I've been with Baxter for almost three years and I proudly participate in the expungement clinic. We work with legal aid to help clients expunge criminal records so they can find much needed employment and housing. The direct and almost instant impact that we can have on a client's life is both meaningful and rewarding. Hi, my name is Stephanie Slack. I'm Associate General Counsel for Baxter's U.S. Hospital Products business, based in Deerfield, Illinois, and I've been with Baxter about two and a half years. I support our local community with pro bono work, including volunteering at clinics to help clients prepare powers of attorney and expunge or seal past criminal records, and also supporting the Center for Enriched Living, located across the street from our offices, 
in their mission to help people with developmental disabilities be fully included in the community, achieve personal success, and enjoy a good quality of life. I have helped CEL by reviewing and advising on leases, agreements, grant documentation, and charitable raffles. Hi, my name is Sarah Padgett. I'm an Assistant General Counsel at Baxter. I've been at Baxter over 13 years and been a proud member of Baxter's pro bono committee for my entire tenure at Baxter. Baxter has a long history of participating in pro bono activities. For a few years, we ran um, a powers of attorney clinic. We had a, a number of partners with that, uh, including McDermott uh, and including Legal Aid Chicago and CDEL. Um, so we recently held an expungement clinic. We had a great participation from Baxter um, and we helped clients uh, work through the expungement process. Hi, my name is Mike Cohen. I'm an Associate General Counsel of Intellectual Property here at Baxter, located in Deerfield, Illinois. I've been with Baxter for seven years to support the local community by coordinating and participating in DACA Deferred Action Clinics and litigating for artists in coordination with the lawyers for the creative arts. Hello, my name is Eileen Karp, and I am the Director of Legal Operations at Baxter, located in Deerfield, Illinois. I've been with Baxter for almost three years, and I participated in the expungement clinic earlier this year. My name is Ethan Burkhoff. I'm an Associate General Counsel in Baxter's Deerfield office. I've been with Baxter for six years. Uh, in addition to serving on Baxter's pro bono committee, I've also worked with CETL on their power of attorney clinics, LAF on their workshops, and the Lawyers in the Classroom program. My name is Ramon Rivera. I have been at Baxter for three years. I am the Deputy General Counsel for the Americas region, supporting the US, Canada, and Latin America. I volunteer part of my pro bono time um, with the Illinois Migrant Council also known as IMC. IMC, um, as, ba as, uh, as background, is a community-based not-for-profit organization with a mission of promoting employment, education, health, housing, and other opportunities for migrant and seasonal workers and their families so they can achieve economic self-sufficiency and stability. This past year, IMC partnered with state and federal agencies and they were at the forefront of establishing clinics to va vaccinate some of the state's most needy workers and their families. I helped uh, review their partnership agreement with these state and federal agencies. I also helped um, IMC finalize their lease agreement and negotiate and finalize their lease agreement for their new office space. Doing this type of work certainly gives me greater purpose Plus, it has been a privilege working with so many neat, bright, and passionate people. Thank you for the opportunity. Hi, I'm Mary Guzman. I'm the Associate General Counsel who supports Baxter's Advanced Surgery Division. I am based in Deerfield, Illinois, and have been with Baxter for six years. I support Legal Aid Chicago's uh, criminal records expungement and sealing clinics, which support the local Chicago land area. Good afternoon. There are many amazing people we should recognize for their efforts today, and I would like to thank them here. Foremost, I would like to recognize the LAS staff of 48 attorneys, paralegals, and other professionals who work to advance the mission and provide equal access to justice every day. Their commitment to justice is unrelenting and unparalleled. In addition, I would like to recognize the more than 140 pro bono volunteers, including attorneys, law students, and paralegals, who donate their time to LAS's mission each year. I would also like to recognize all of the members of the LAS Board of Directors, 
a group of more than 30 lawyers and other professionals who provide their time, experience, and invaluable assistance to advance LAS's mission in the community. Finally, I would like to recognize the host committee for this year's Equal Access to Justice Luncheon, a group of more than 40 lawyers who have all generously supported this year's event and also raised awareness for LAS's mission. You have done an incredible job supporting this vital institution and helping to raise funds to keep it thriving. There are also some people I'd like to recognize individually for their contributions to this year's efforts. First, I'd like to recognize the co-chairs of this year's event, Leslie Smith of Kirkland & Ellis, Ken Matthew of Charles Rivers Associates, and also I'd like to add here Chris Swanson of Charles River Associates, who was instrumental in getting the ball rolling at the start. Next, I would like to recognize the two people at Baxter who were vital in pulling everything together on the Baxter side. Stacy Eisen, our Senior Vice President for Corporate Communications, and Elaine Karp, our Director of Legal Operations. And finally, I would like to recognize two people who have been phenomenal throughout this process and deserve our deep, deepest appreciation for their hard work and commitment. Corinne Henry, the Director of Advancement at Metropolitan Family Services, and Miguel Caberline, the Executive Director at the Legal Aid Society. Truly, this award is really for Baxter and the Baxter Legal Department here in Chicago and around the world. I am grateful to work for a company that prioritizes service to others and gives back to the communities in which we live and work. I've had the great privilege and honor to work with such tremendously dedicated, selfless, caring, thoughtful, and fun people. And I treasure that opportunity every day. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Gutierrez, the managing attorney of our safety and family practice group. I'm pleased today to share a story with you about a client of mine, Rochelle Smith. Rochelle survived and left an abusive situation with the support of a wide variety of legal and social services from both LAS and Metropolitan Family Services. It's an example of the way that we strive to provide wraparound services to clients with the full spectrum of support that they need for success. Rochelle is here with me today and will share a little bit more about her experience with LAS. Hi, Rochelle. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Can you just um, share a little bit about what it was like working with LAS in our agency? It was, it was mind-blowing. Um, it was it was breathtaking. <laughs> Working with you all and meeting you all has been a life changing. I feel like you all are my family, and I know it's limitations to you all, but I feel like I can contact you all every day. I can text you when I need you. No matter what I'm going through, you all are always there. You don't put me on no limitation. You never turn me away. It's amazing to meet you all. It's yeah. It's amazing. Well, we were so glad that you were connected with us. Um, and, you know, I know the court process took a really long time because of COVID, right? Um, and so how did you feel when that was all finished and you were granted your long-term order of protection? I was happy. I was happy. And I felt like it worked out in my favor. Um, I didn't feel like no one was picking and choosing sides because what I was going through and who I was and the situation, I just felt like... Um, you all took your time. Um, you went through the um, process as you should. Um, you all stayed in contact. You asked questions. You followed up. Um, I felt good. And I still feel good to this day. Things are still going going good. You know, I, I don't feel left out. I'm always put in the loop. So that's, that's a good thing. That's a good yeah. thing. That's yeah. so great to hear. Um, and what do you think that this process would have been like if um, you didn't have a lawyer helping you? I wouldn't be here today. Um, I know that for a fact. Um, there is help out here. You know, all you have to do is keep keep going. Open your mouth. Talk. You know, ask for help. Don't never, you know, sell yourself short on saying, I, they not going to believe me. Um, what do I do? There's no proof. You know, I can't get no help. No, you can get help. Open your mouth and talk. You know, yeah. you don't, don't, you know, push yourself on the back burner and mm -hmm. think about the negativity. You got to think about the positivity and the outlook of things. You know, if something's really bad. 
So. Yeah, I think that's great. You know, you've put yourself first um, through counseling for you and your daughter yes. as well with MFS. Yes. And so how has that helped you and your daughter? Amazing. I graduated from all my classes. Um, my daughter saved. She graduated from all her classes. And I'm so happy that you all are still in my, that they all are still in my life. You know, I asked them, am I bugging you? Am I getting on your nerves? Um, I have a question. I'm so sorry. Bob, you're no Miss Smith. You're not bothering us. Like, it's no, um, you're, you're never bothering me, Rochelle. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. And to get those phone calls, you know, from somebody so big, so much power to check on me. You know, I, I feel like I'm the only one in the world. That's how it makes me feel. It makes me feel so good. It really, really do. Like, oh, my God, they called and checked up on me this morning. <laughs> So I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful. Yes. Is there something that you've been particularly proud of um, during this process and how you've managed? Yes. I'm proud of myself because I know how to not be gullible. I know how to not be a fool. I'm so proud of myself. I tell people all the time. When people talk to me, call me what you want. I am cocky. I'm very arrogant because I'm so <laughs> myself. Yes, I can say this. Um, I used to be like, I'm a survivor. I used to say, I'm a victim. I used to be like, you don't know what I went through. Don't talk to me like that. I used to show a little pity on myself. I used to be like, now I'm like, child, please, you have no idea who I am, babe. You don't know what I've been through. Like, I know how some people like, they feel like they was a slave. I feel like I was a slave and I was captured and stuck in this evil like cult. Like, I'm so happy I'm free. Like, I have butterflies all over my house. Mm -hmm. So free yeah I have so happy and at peace in my life yeah and I you know he's still a little part of my life a little bit but it don't bother me I'm okay yeah friend I'm okay so yes I'm very proud of myself I I'm so happy to hear that um what advice would you give to someone who's going through what you went through I will tell them to just talk open your mouth don't be scared and that's what I did. I opened my mouth and I talked and I broke my fear of cycle because I was fearful. I was scared. And I realized if I don't do something, my family going to be looking for me and they're not going to be able to me. You know, like I had to think about that. You know, it's just me and my baby. I don't have no parents. You know, I don't have no friends. Really not too many family members. And I'm so happy that I had to gain a family through the situation I was going through. Because um, I was out there. So, yes, just open your mouth and talk. That's all. Rochelle, I am so glad that you asked for help and that you were connected with our agency and that we've, you know, been able to work together um, to, and I've been able to watch you grow. It's been great. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Um, and I look forward to always continuing to work with you. Yes. Yes. And thank you for not letting me go. Thank you for putting your wings around me. I appreciate you so much. I can't say thank you enough. Like, you mean so much to me. Thank you. And um, you helped me grow as a mother to be better for faith because I was broken. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I've been a member of the Board of Metropolitan Family Services since 1999 and of the Legal Aid Society since 2005. I served as the chair of LAS from 2008 to 2010, when I also chaired its strategic planning initiative and have handled pro bono cases for legal aid as well. In the early 2000s, Legal Aid was a relatively small organization focused primarily on domestic violence and related contested divorces out of a small central office in downtown Chicago. Today, consistent with the vision encompassed in its strategic plan, legal aid is integrated in the broad range of work of Metropolitan Family Services and its centers and serves over 20,000 clients a year. The thing that makes the Legal Aid Society really special is its ability to team with Metropolitan Family Services to provide coordinated legal and social services to its clients. Many legal issues are tied up with social issues like housing disputes, spousal partner abuse, joblessness, or gang violence. As lawyers who work on pro bono cases, 
we are often confronted with legal problems that are symptoms of other issues facing our clients. Legal aid offers its clients the opportunity to confront legal and social issues together with support for the clients and their families, both in the courts and in centers across the Chicago metropolitan area. Instead of focusing narrowly on a housing dispute or divorce, the integration of legal aid with metropolitan family services helps to give clients the tools they need to find a job or rebuild their family, reducing the chance they'll have to repeat an experience with the court system. I'm proud to join with all of you here today in supporting this unique organization and helping it to serve so many in so many ways. We want to thank you again for joining us today for our 2021 LAS Luncheon. We are so appreciative of your support and your engagement with LAS. Hopefully the many stories you heard today from both staff and clients, board members and others, and seeing the fabulous work of Sean Martin and Baxter International inspire you to remain engaged with us in the future. We are happy to explore any opportunities that might exist with you or your partner organizations in order to bring more and better services to the communities here in Chicago. Thank you again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again very soon.